I greet the church with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite everyone to stand up. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord is located in the Gospel of Luke. Luke 14, chapter 14. Gospel according to Luke is wrote, chapter 14, verse 15. Amen. Who didn't bring a Bible can follow here on the projection. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdoms of God. Kingdom of God. Then he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and set his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Amen. My brother, the Lord Jesus, in this message, he was explaining to the disciples, clarifying regarding a doubt that arose in their midst. In the previous verses, Jesus was uh, telling them a parable, and this parable had the objective of opening up their understanding regarding being humble, humbleness. Where should the guests, guests sit down at a table? At the front, uh, on the back, in the middle? And Jesus, in a very simple way, was explaining to them that what the important thing was for men, for men to be invited and for men to be participating on the feast, on the supper. And Jesus, in his ministry, he spoke many times in his messages. He used this resource, which were the parables. The parables were told by Jesus because they were a way of causing men to understand and will be, will be able to assimilate but he was trying to explain. Normally, the parables were stories that of their daily lives on earth, but had a, a spiritual meaning. The parables were stories. He would pick up what was something that happened in their daily lives of people, something that would be simple for them to understand and then Jesus would tell the story related to the to their lives but the meaning was spiritual and now the disciples when they heard this parable together with the crowd that always followed Jesus and those this crowd in this multitude you you would see it um, you would see everything as Jesus became uh, more and more well-known throughout his three years of earthly ministry, as he became better known by people, the people would always follow Jesus. And you see people that were all always interested in knowing the message, people that were interested in being healed, people that were interested in, in in having their hunger uh, addressed. So people were, a crowd was always around Jesus. So then Jesus begins to speak to his disciples. And quickly he 
he answers the questions, he directs, he resorts once again to a parable. We live today in a world in which the church has a commitment with God. The church has a mission. In the beginning, God chose Israel to be God's people. And now God begins to use the prophets. God sends the signs. He sends the warnings. God uses the prophets to correct the people of Israel about and to tell them about what was about to happen, the true Messiah, who was going to be the Son of God. But the prophets were ignored by the people. Their words, their messages, their warnings, they were all ignored. To the point where there was a period of 400, re 400 years where the prophets didn't exist in, in the midst of the Israelites. For 400 years, God stopped speaking with the Israeli people. But now Jesus, just before Je the last of the prophets arose, who was called John the Baptist, just before Jesus, and he begins to speak about the Messiah. And once again, he was ignored. And the people of Israel didn't even try to find out if he, what he was saying, John the Baptist was saying, matched what the old prophets used to say. After 400 years, now John the ba Baptist begins to speak, and he was also ignored. And where else John the Baptist began to preach? Again, he went to the desert. He went to the desert to preach. His word had no meaning for him to preach for the people. Then he goes to the desert. And there on the desert, you know what uh, John the Baptist ate? He ate locusts. Yes. Is it because he liked it? Can you imagine uh, locusts, medium rare? There's nothing better than that, right? Uh, grilled locust? No, of course not. It was because there is nothing else for for John the Baptist to eat, and people was not was no longer taking care of the prophets. John the Baptist went there, and there his message was repent because the time is at hand, the time of the kingdom of God, and that was the message of Don John the Baptist. And those were the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus. And now the church also has a message. The prophecy is being fulfilled. Jesus comes. Jesus plays his role. He dies on, and on the third day he resurrects. And then he says, he says that he was going to return. Then now God prepares a people, God prepares a church. The commitment with, with that God had now, now was not related to geography. The commitment of God was now with man, with the church that is listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this church has a message. And the message of the church is Jesus is coming. Jesus proclaimed in the same way the church proclaims in the same way that John the Baptist proclaimed. The church is ignored and hated by the people, by the world. And that's why there are so many trials. There are so many obstacles for the people of God. And this is all prophetic. There's no way to go around this. There's no way for, for us to go beyond this. But it is interesting to notice that the word of the Lord is being fulfilled. The signs are there, clear. The world already speaks of this. Everything that is in the word, everything that is happening today has already been announced in the word. 
All the prophecies regarding the return of Jesus have, have already been fulfilled. They are not going to be fulfilled. They have already been fulfilled. The only prophecy that is left is the prophecy of the return of Jesus. And that's what Jesus says and when, he, when he heard this, the ones who were, or were at the table, he, they, he said, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdoms of God. Blessed are those who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Blessed is, are the ones who are giving heed to the voice of the Lord. Blessed are those who are being fed by the word of God. Blessed are those there, the servant, the youth, the child, the elder. No matter what group you are part of, doesn't matter where you will, you will be placed. According to your age, your social status, whether you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter. God doesn't choose a person over another. What matters here is that it doesn't matter if you are in the front or in the back. For, for God, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you are sitting at the table and being fed with the Word of God. What matters, what is important, is that you are here in the, word, in the house of the Lord. What is important is that you are connected to the Father through Jesus. And then he said, a certain man made, had a great supper and invited many. And at the moment of the supper, he sent his uh, employees to call his guests. Come, everything is ready. It is different. Let's, let's see here. Imagine if we prepared here like we had yesterday. We had a special service where many brethren were baptized on the waters. It was, was a great celebration. Youth. There was also a couple that chose to serve the Lord, answering the call of the Lord. They chose to baptize. They chose to say to everyone, I, from this day forward, I have a God that takes care of my life. That's wonderful. Yesterday we had this feast here. It was proclaimed by all. We went to, went to WhatsApp and we sent messages. Everybody knew about this feast. And everyone came to uh, the, cho the church, came to this feast. But it is different than this one that Jesus spoke about. And a certain man made a great feast and he invited many. Where does he say it here that he, he set up the day? Who can tell me? Did, have you read here? There's no day, there's no time, there's no location. It just said that a certain man made a great supper and invited many. And at the moment of the supper, when everything was prepared, then he told to, to tell the guests to come because the, the feast is, is ready. That's the return of Jesus. That's the message of the church. And the signs are all out there. Man just needs to open his heart and accept the word of God. Man just needs to leave the gospel. My brethren, the gospel is not made to be debated about and to be understood. The gospel was not made by God and left to us so that we, in the midst of a, a discussion and argument, is this and there, where are you going to serve the Lord? Is it possible that you are in the right place? Is, is that the way that you serve the Lord? No, the gospel is not made for this for you to understand it, to debate about it. The gospel was created by God so that man would believe in God. And it is the Holy Spirit that does that. The church preaches. The church proclaims. The church shows. The signs are out there. Are out there. Be, uh, they are, uh, have been fulfilled. They are being brought to man's attention. And man in the world, they are seeing. We are witnesses of this in our days even more. Because the word says that in the last days, it will be like, like a woman that was in, in about to deliver a baby. The contractions were coming shorter in shorter time. 
And today, because of the resources that we have, with computer, the internet, and everything, we see things happening live. There's no delay, like I meant to say, this is not a project of God. There's no way for me to run away from this. The world is walking towards with long strides towards perdition, and the church is fulfilling the prophecy of God and, and their rhythm according to the will of God. And the commitment of God today is with the church, is with the people of God that is fighting to be to enter into the feast, getting ready for the feast. We don't know the day, but we know there is a feast that is about to happen. Even and then, we are on the service. We participate on a banquet like yesterday. And then we have the assurance of the following. This day will come. Tuesday, we have another service, more feast. That's the sign that we have. Is the assurance that we have that we are in the right place. The assurance that we have that truly the Father is preparing a place for the feast. And we as a church, we have already received the invitation. We are invited. What awaits us now is to hear the sound of the last trumpet. And with Jesus, we return to take the faithful church. So now, this message is left for you. Our responsibility is this, is to transmit that there is still a place to be it's a place to be a spot to be filled in this feast you, there is still opportunity for you to grab onto your invitation and to be part of this faithful church that will be taken away from this world many are being called but few are chosen but tonight you can choose the Lord and to become uh, one of the chosen by the Lord you just need to open up your heart and you just need to hear the voice of the Lord and say, Lord, I need this, I want this, and I want to be prepared to meet with Jesus. We don't know the day. No one knows. Not even the time. Not even Jesus knows. But this day is the Father knows. And we know that this day is coming soon. So, my brethren, our role is this, is to be, to get prepared to be called for this feast. Amen. May God, at tonight, be working on your heart. May God cause you to accept this. May God, tonight, may remove the incredulity, the lack of understanding. May the Lord open your mind and your heart so that you might be able to say, Lord, I want to be blessed. I want to be sitting at the table, feeding up this bread, and to be prepared for when the day arrives, whether this is the day of the rapture of the church or the day when I will be called to leave this world and meet Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless us. We're going to hear a, hear a song.
do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, this song was sang by the slaves. Let my people go. Their joy was to sing this song to the Lord. And is the joy of the church is the same. Let my people go. Let my people go. And that's what the Lord is saying to the world. The signs are being fulfilled. The judgment is out there. Is exactly this. Let my people depart. And the church will depart. And no one will prevent the project of God for the salvation of man. No one will prevent. And the blessing is that we can now really glorify the Lord. With joy we sing this song because it is uh, the eternity is our direction our objective and we're going towards heaven with long strides and the project of the father will be fulfilled we're going to stand up and have a word of glorification of the lord we praise the lord because our, sh our joy is that the assurance that our redeemer leaves we praise you because one day we'll see you face to face lord we know that the church that pray is the glorious church. We pray to you, Lord. Because you know that soon you will return, Lord. We praise you for this wonderful promise, Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. My brother and sister, you, you who entered here visiting us, do not ignore the prophecy. Do not abandon the prophecy. Check on the Bible. Uh, check the signs that we are seeing in the world. Review on the, the word of the Lord. And you will see that the project of, of God to save men has already been fulfilled. And come to sit at the table eating the bread, being fed by the Lord, being cared for by the Lord. The proof of this is what God has done in our lives. This testimony the church of the Lord can give you. The Lord has shown here on the service tonight a servant who entered here. She has a financial, financial commitments to pay this week and she doesn't have enough resources. She's lacking financial resources, but the Lord is telling you, because of your faithfulness, I will send the resource. Still this week, the door will open up and you will be able to glorify the name of the Lord. That's right. The trials may arise, the opposition, the difficulties may come, but we have a God that take care of us, takes care of us. You know why? Because we are sitting at the table and the Lord is feeding us. He is giving us the bread that never perishes, that never, that, that never runs out. And this bread is the Lord Jesus. That's why the church lives, lives in this world with joy. With joy in the soul, joy in the heart. Because we know that at any moment, our names are going to be called. We're going to have yet another word of glorification to the Lord. We're going to have only joy and blessing in our, in our lives when we come to heaven, Lord. Our heart desire this day, Lord. Burn out the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we want to glorify your name because we, yet another night of feast we are having your presence. We glorify you, Lord, for your help, for your rescue that come in the right moment. We glorify you, Lord, because our names are written in the book of life. And we know, Lord, that nothing will take our names out of this book. We know, Lord, that no one will take us away from your presence. That's why tonight we glorify you, Lord because you have helped us to this day. We have not lacked the resource. We have not lacked the, res the direction. We have not lacked the hands of the Lord giving us all the protection that we need. And tonight we ask, Lord, that your word may transform hearts and that your spirit may have freedom to operate, removing, Lord, a lack of faith, removing the incredulity, and place in our hearts the assurance of salvation. May the Holy Spirit uh, be touching on, on our hearts, the ones who are present here, and that we may have in our lips praises to you, Lord. Take us home in peace and that we have a week of victories in your presence is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit 
be poured out upon not all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. The congregation may sit down. If you need a prayer, we are making ourselves available to you. It is important at this moment that you want. You need to tell the Lord, I need a blessing. Right? If you do this tonight, do Lord, surely, who bless not only your life, but the life of your entire family. Amen? You and now we we send the church to your homes with the peace of the Lord.